And I got to tell you, as as much as I would love Ron Paul to win tonight, because then we get to rub some egg on some media faces, the signs of vote fraud are everywhere. Uh, one that came out earlier is even though photo IDs were required in uh, the Ames, Iowa straw poll, which doesn't really count, it's not all that important, but they were requiring photo IDs to prevent duplication of vote, that has been waived in, in the uh, caucuses tonight. You're not required to show a voter ID as long as you show up and, and are able to pay the registration fee, you can get in and vote. Vote early and often. And this is very obviously a situation that is going to favor candidates with a lot of money behind them, <coughs> Romney, because Romney supporters can show up early, walk in, vote, walk out, walk back in, go to another desk, pay the fee again, go back and vote again, come back out, and so forth and so on. For those parts of Iowa where, where the caucus locations are very close to each other, you could vote at one caucus, drive for five minutes, vote at another one. They're not checking for vote for They're not checking for duplicate votes. Okay? And uh, the, official, the official reason given for this is they're expecting this will boost turnout. Well, of course it's going to boost turnout. If you have, you know, people voting five and six and ten and twelve times, yeah, the numbers are going to be up, but they're not real people. Remember, Mitt Romney's top contributor is Goldman Sachs, and Goldman Sachs will spend any amount of the money they have taken from you to keep Ron Paul out, because Ron Paul is not a friend of Wall Street, he's not a friend of Israel, he's not a friend of the war machine. And Iowa has been set up by the GOP to favor the candidates with the big money behind him. So the lesson we should all learn from this, not only for tonight and New Hampshire, but for the rest of the 2012 election season, is vote cheap. Because the candidate with the most money is not working for you. Vote cheap. The candidate with the most money is not working for you. He or she is working for the, whoever gave him the money. Do you think that these large corporations which claim to be persons are giving this money away just for the heck of it? No, they expect something back. They are buying the election by buying candidates on both sides. And when they come up against a candidate who doesn't have a price tag on him, whoa, the universe threatens to collapse in on him. And so that's why the, you know, this huge, I mean, even just watching the, the corporate media, uh, the attitude is openly, oh, Ron Paul just really should go away. He can't beat Obama. He shouldn't be in here. He's just mucking it up for the real Republican candidates. By the way, we've been going back and forth on this story where uh, the Iowa GOP is saying it's going to be an open count and they're going to they're going to just you know count votes in the caucus precincts location and tally them all up on public sheets where everybody can see it. Well, that sounded really good, but they are still doing the final counts in a secret, undisclosed location, which has now been leaked as being Springfield, Illinois, not even in the same state. That's how desperate they are not to have witnesses. And so uh, this is obviously where it's, it's going to happen. According to Bev Harris over at Black Box Voting, the most common way to cheat the Iowa caucuses is for the precinct leaders to take the count and mark it down honestly, and then on the piece of paper that goes to the final tally, you just put a completely different number. And they caught them doing this back in 2008. Remember, there was this one town in New Hampshire where the official final vote tally said, no votes for Ron Paul, and all of a sudden the phone lines into the talk shows lit up. I live in that town. I and everybody I know voted for Ron Paul. What the heck happened? And the important lesson here is that even after that fraud was exposed, there was no recount, and they didn't even change the final numbers. The final numbers said nobody in this town voted for Ron Paul, and everybody's saying, yeah, we voted for him. I'm sorry, those are the final results. They have been certified. Therefore, we cannot challenge them. Yeah. When they use the word certified, it means, yeah, we got away with lying you. You know, we, 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 we got away with lying to you, and you might as well just accept it and go back to your slave pen. So, I would like to see Ron Paul win, and I may be pleasantly surprised, but I'm seeing the signs all over. They're going to steal it from him. They want to get rid of him and as quickly as possible because his, his support is just growing. It's just all over the place. We, the people, want Ron Paul. Remember when you had that Republican strategist was saying that the Iowa GOP will not allow Ron Paul to win? 
What an attitude that is displaying towards the American people by the Republican Party. I have a quote for you. This is from Henry Kissinger. The issues are much too important for the voters to be left to decide for themselves. That was Henry Kissinger justifying the U.S. overthrow of the democratically elected government of Salvador Allende in Chile to President Richard Milhouse Nixon, another Republican, I might add. And so that's the attitude. We can't leave it up to the voters. It's too important. We've got to invade Iran. We've got to support Wall Street. We've got to support Israel. And the voters are just too stupid to understand that. Therefore, we're going to bypass them. That's the displayed attitude. The GOP has decided that you, the voters, are way too stupid to run your own country. Because, after all, we know it really belongs to Goldman Sachs anyway. So for the GOP to come out there and say, you're not allowed to have your own candidate in there, it's basically, it's treason. It's treason against everything the United States is supposed to be. We, the people, are supposed to pick our candidates, and then we, the people, decide which one of those candidates we want to have run the country for us. And when you have the party apparatus and the corporate media and Wall Street coming in there and saying, no, 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 you have to pick one of the candidates we want, that's not democracy. It's not a republic. It's a dictatorship. And this whole illusion of an election process is theta. You know, with, with lights and cameras and, and curtains and costumes and well-dressed bimbos to come out and say, oh yes, this is the way life is supposed to be. I am getting a lot of emails from people who are very, very angry right now. They're waiting to see what actually happens tonight. And their attitude basically is, they know in a fair election, Ron Paul would ace this. I know it too. There's no question in my mind that in an honest, fair election, where they're not grabbing up the tally sheets and scurrying off to another state to do the final count, that Ron Paul is going to win. So the question is, what do we do when it becomes obvious that our election system has been hijacked once again? What do we do? We're going to take a break for commercials, and we are getting some news here. First of all, remember in uh, the first segment I talked about this MSN had this poll that was just completely at odds with all the other online polls. Uh, uh, with They had Romney 51%, and it was never changing no matter how many people voted. MSN just took that poll down, and they replaced it with, who's your favorite game show host of the past or present? <laughs> well, we put up a link earlier saying, please write into MSN and complain that we know you're lying, okay? The first rule of propaganda is, it's got to be believable. You know, if you put up this absolute nonsense, contrived public poll, we're going to bust you on it. And MSN just took it down, so score a victory for us. Now, we are starting to get exit poll numbers. And Ron Paul is clearly in the lead. Let me back up and do that one again because it sounds so good. Ron Paul is clearly in the lead. But remember, even with him leading in the exit poll numbers, they can still steal it and say, well, we guess those voters were just lying to those exit poll takers because that was the excuse they used up in New Hampshire in 2008 when Obama was leading Hillary by a huge margin. And everybody said if, if Hillary loses New Hampshire, it's the end of her campaign. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, in the dark, when nobody was around to see, Hillary pulled ahead. And, of course, it didn't match the exit poll numbers, and the corporate media was saying, well, we, we guess the voters were lying to the exit pollsters. Does that make any sense? Whenever you've gone to vote, have you actually recognized the people doing the exit polling? You don't know who they are. You don't care what they think about you. There's no reason for you to lie to the exit pollsters. It's just a concocted pile of bovine excrement by the corporate media to try and get you to go along with the fact that your elections are being stolen. And they still may try with Ron Paul tonight, but remember, if his lead is large enough, remember, you can't reverse a landslide. Now, they, in Iowa, when uh, Pat Buchanan was charge, uh, challenging Bob Dole for the nomination, they had to whack his totals down by 13% in order to throw the race to Bob Dole by a wide enough margin where, he, where Buchanan couldn't call for a recount. So Ron Paul needs a bigger lead than he has right now. And remember what I warned you about uh, a, a week ago. 
If the media says he's ahead at the very beginning, that is probably to try and trick more of Ron Paul's supporters to stay home, because it is very cold up there. But the corporate media and Wall Street and Israel are just absolutely terrified of Ron Paul. If he wins tonight, they're going to break out all over in sphincters and relieve themselves to death. I'm putting that as politely and gently as I can without risking the license on this here radio station. But, I mean, they are afraid of him because the goal for the 2012 elections is for us to, we the people, to not have any choice whatsoever regarding the big issues, the war, the economy, and support for Israel. They'll let us argue back and forth about, you know, gay marriage and abortion and illegal immigration and the stuff that they don't really care about. But on the big issues that affect the entire nation, the war, wars plural, the economy, and Israel, they don't want us to have any choice whatsoever. It is the uh, attempt by the Iowa GOP and the corporate media to subvert democracy. And again, it's an example of why we've got to get the big money out of politics, because money always serves itself. You know, we're hearing like Mitt Romney's out there saying corporations are are persons. No, they're not. Persons have awareness. They have sentience. They have intelligence. And more importantly, they have a conscience. They have a sense of morals. They have a sense of remorse when they do something bad. They have finite lifespans and awareness of their own mortality that shapes their behavior. Corporations are giant harvesting machines, and they are no more a person than a John Deere combine. And it's stupid to call them persons. What's that bumper sticker that's floating around? I'll believe corporations are persons when Texas executes one. Absolutely agree with that here. Um, all right, we've got a caller on the line, David from Arkansas. Aloha, David. Welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Just give me a minute here because I want to share with you a little wisdom that was imparted to me by my maternal grandfather, the one who rode with uh, Teddy Roosevelt, served in World War I, and was good buddies with Richard Nixon. Drinking buddies, actually. They, they used to get pretty tight on the turkey nip. Uh, when I was a little boy, and I was uh, living with my grandparents at the time, so I got to see Richard Nixon. Didn't like him, didn't understand who he was. I was a little too young to understand what vice president means, but I just knew I didn't like the guy on a gut level. My grandfather used to tell me the best way to run a country is you elect somebody. If they don't do what they promise they'll do, and only what they'll promise they'll do, you shoot them. Then you elect somebody else. And if they don't do what they promise they'll do, and only what they promise they'll do, you shoot them. Then you elect a third politician, and the odds are they're going to do what they promise they're going to do, and only what they promise they're going to do. And I think in hindsight, my grandfather had some words of wisdom we all need to be listening to. Because we've had decade after decade of politicians who will say whatever they need to say to get the votes to get in, and once they're in, they just had a heck with the voters... You know, i got to take care of the people who gave me all that money to get in here. You know, we got the finest government money can buy, and unfortunately, the bad people have got all the money, so we have bad government. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. There's got to be some accountability and ramifications for betrayal of the public trust. There should be. There yeah. aren't. We used to have it. It was called tar and feathers. I think we need to bring that back. I agree. Well, we need to do more than just get Ron Paul in prison. We we need to get as many people into the House and the Senate and all the local offices as possible that aren't you know beholding to the money powers across the board. You know we can take this back, but it's going to take a bunch of really good people to step it, it, up. It is. I mean, if if we want to avoid a bloody, violent revolution in this country, this is our last chance. And, you know, oh. even, if, even if Ron Paul wins tonight, that's only one out of 50. We've got 49 more of these that we have to get through to get him to the nomination. And I know the corporate media is saying, oh, Ron Paul couldn't possibly beat Obama. He's the only Republican who can. Okay? And, oh, yeah. and it will mean, yeah, Paul- derailing, it, it'll mean derailing the war machine, and it will certainly Israel's going to be very unhappy about that. My heart bleeds for them. And, of course, Wall Street is terrified of Ron Paul because they've had this very cozy deal where these private bankers get to act like they're part of the government, and they aren't. And, you know, there's a, the, the forces arrayed against Ron Paul are mythic in stature. Earlier today I had this graphic I put up at whatreallyhappened.com of uh, Jason fighting the, 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 the Hydra, and each of the Hydra's head is labeled ABC, CN, uh, CNN, NBC, Fox, and so forth and so on. And it really is very much like that. And Ron Paul by himself as president, he can do a lot of good for the country. 
but he can't do it all by himself. And you're absolutely right. This is, if, if we get Ron Paul all the way to the White House, it's the beginning of the effort to turn the country around, and we're going to have to get the money junkies out of power. We're going to have to shut off this idea that dual nationals, dual citizens who are more loyal to Israel than the United States, you know, have any place in the American government, because they don't. We need to get them out. Absolutely. And we need, to, we need to basically remember the wisdom of George Washington, who in his farewell address said, don't get caught up in other people's problems. So we've got to take a break for commercials. 